So you want to make the move from SEU to an IDE. First of all, what took you so long? <laughs> and secondly, don't use RDI. Come and check out Visual Studio. It's cool. So I'm going to go and do it in real time. I've actually had it installed on my, my machine and I deliberately uninstalled it so that we can go right from the beginning. Um, and with my RDI course that I wrote a few years ago, there was a whole thing that I created called What's Some English Bloke Download RDI. So I'm going to do the same thing for Visual Studio Code right now. So if you're coming into the course that I have set up here, the freebie course, it already has the link to the Visual Studio Code uh, website. Grab the latest version from the Visual Studio Code website. Let's go. Here it is. Do some cookies. blah -de blah I'm just going to grab the very latest version. This is really simple. You're going to be impressed. It downloads the latest version of VS Code user setup. Um, my internet's pretty slow, but this is a very small download size. Especially when you consider, what is it, 69, 70? It's around 90 meg download, whereas Rational Developer is on like four DVDs or something stupid. Anyway, let's open it. This is uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code. I accept, of course. Let me just read these instructions. Yeah, yeah, sounds good to me. Um, I'm going to take all defaults. Let it go. Uh, register code as an editor. Yep. I'm also going to create a desktop icon because I like to organize things on my desktop. You do you. And here we are installing. This is actually much faster than I was anticipating. So we might end up just doing this completely in real time. And see how we go. Let's launch Visual Studio Code for the first time. And we're off. Let me drag it over this side because I know that my ugly mug video will be living down here somewhere. Right, here we are in Visual Studio Code. It's using the dark theme. You can change the theme however you like it. Um, Visual Studio Code is just like a fancy code editor. It's an IDE, right? So it's just like using Notepad. You can edit PHP or HTML or text files or anything that you like that you've already got on your machine. Um, it knows about things like XML and JSON, does that kind of, of formatting. But what we want to do is we want to add a plugin that lets this code editor talk to our IBM machine. Down the left hand side, you have these icons. The bottom one is extensions. Let's extend Visual Studio Code. It shows that I've got none installed. And here's a list of all the popular extensions that are out there. So you can see people are using it to code in Python, Jupyter, whatever that is, C++, bloody, bloody, blah, blah, blah. Now, if I just type in code for I into your search bar, here's all of our related extensions to do with code for I. Let's install them one by one. I'll install the, the main one. It's installing, done. Code work through came with it. An IBM I renderer to preview display files and printer files. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Sounds like SEU on steroids. DB2? Yeah, who wouldn't want to do DB2? VS Code Notebooks for IBM I. What is this? Adds an IBM I Notebook, which allows users to create notebooks to run commands in paste and execute CL. Yeah, I'll have that. IBM I Development Pack. A set of extensions for in Visual Studio Code. All right, okay. So someone has put this code pack together, which has a whole bunch of extensions. It's a good idea. Let's just install this. Okay, so by putting code for I in there, I've now got all of these extensions added in. Now, the eagle-eyed viewers amongst you may have noticed that at some stage during adding all of these uh, marketplace extensions, a new icon popped up over here. And here it is. We now have a connection icon for IBM I systems. If I collect this, okay. What this then shows is all of the IBM I systems that I can connect to. Now, if this is your first time ever installing, you won't have anything here. But because I had this on and uh, I've been playing with it for the last few weeks, these are the three connections that I had previously 
stored within VS Code. They're obviously stored in some folder on my PC. When you want to create a new one, you just click the plus sign and it asks you for a name and address, the username, that's your profile, and your profile password, or you can use a private key if that's your jam for connecting. Um, I'm actually going to use, actually, shh, I've got to block this out. I'm going to connect to my own personal server in the cloud uh, using VPN. So while I'm keying in the passwords, you can watch this two second commercial of uh, a kitten. And we're back, VPN connected. So let's log on to my little machine and we want to make sure that the SSH server is up and running. Of course, there's a hundred different ways that you can do this, but just for clarity's sake, do it this way. You're going to sign on to your machine and from any command line, do a start TCP server, asterisk SSHD. So we're just going to start the TCP IP server, the SSHD one. You haven't got to change anything else, and you just press enter. So um, SSHD is the IBM I uh, server interpretation of Open SSH, which is um, an encryption technique that listens to incoming connections, um, handles validation and encryption, and makes sure that having your conversation, everything that you're having is secure and encrypted. So while it would always be better to do this over an SSL connection or over a VPN like I'm doing, you should feel confident enough to do this, at least for your programming over any connection. Now let's try our first ever connection. So here we have my connection to my machine. Um, I'm gonna click the little arrow here. Now the first time that um, Visual Studio Co code tries to connect to your machine, it goes through all of those extensions activating them. And sometimes it will come up and say, do you want to update this one or here's a new one? Or um, I know the first ever time that I loaded this, it came up and said I had to create uh, an IFS location for my user name that I'm connecting with. So you're basically just going to say yes, 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 yes to everything that happens there. Here we are looking at saying, would you like to install the CL prompting tools? <laughs> yeah, I would. And here we are running. Now, bearing in mind that I have my my little personal machine is a very small power system running in a dim, forgotten, dark, dreary corner of the internet. So performance times are not fast, but it's functional. Something went really wrong during the update process for DB2 for I output log. Yeah, okay. I don't care that that didn't install. Probably one of the many um, extensions within that pack that I just tried to install. There we are, look, connected to, and there's my IP address of my machine. So what we have over on the left here, very, very similar to RDI. We just wanna, we can either connect to DB2 and put library names in, we have the schema browser, or we can pull an object browser or a user library list, or specific objects. The object browser is remembering that I've previously done a browser into a source file on my machine. Okay, so we have Visual Studio Code installed and we're gonna to start to use it. So I'm gonna stop this video right now and do a fresh section that I can put in a different uh, lesson format in the class so you can go through and repeat as often as possible. But here we are, Visual Studio Code up and running. That was painless, right, and quick. So let's have a little play with it for a first hands-on experience.